Good morning, Jay with Great Scott Audio Productions and Bitten by Books, Book Bites. This week, uh, this one's near and dear to my heart. I love this series. Janine Frost, I can't say enough good things about the Night Huntress series. Cat and Bones, a clandestine couple. I mean, we're talking Scarlet and O'Hara and, and Rhett Butler and just, I mean, we're that big, okay? Um, just, it, it starts out, you think, you know, a lot of angst, a lot of anger, but we get to move on and the, the story is just so potent and so powerful. It's a neat take on vampire hunting and that sort of thing. Um, it's just a good rollick. It's, uh, I can't say enough good things, so I'm going to just, <clears throat> excuse me, a little froggy this morning. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in on chapter one so you get introduced to Cat and get a little taste of, uh, of what she's like, okay? I stiffened at the red and blue lights flashing behind me because there was no way I could explain what was in the back of my truck. I pulled over, holding my breath as the sheriff came to my window. Hi, something wrong? My tone was all innocence while I prayed there was nothing unusual about my eyes. Control yourself. You know what happens when you get upset. Yeah, you got a busted tail light. License and registration, please. Crap. That must have happened when I was loading up the truck bed. Speed had have been of the essence then, not daintiness. I handed in my real license, not the fake one. He shone his flashlight back and forth between the identification and my face. Catherine Crawfield. You're Justin Crawfield's girl, aren't you? From the Crawfield Cherry Orchard? Yes, sir politely and blandly, as if I didn't care, have a care in the world. Well, Catherine, it's nearly 4 a.m., and why are you out this late? I could tell him the truth about my activities, except I didn't want to sign on for a hard time, or an extended stay in a padded cell. I couldn't sleep, so I decided I'd drive around. To my dismay, he ambled to the bed of the truck and shone his light in. What you got back there? Oh, nothing unusual. A dead body under some bags and an axe. Bags of cherries from my grandparents' orchard. If my heartbeat were any louder, it would deafen him. Really? With his flashlight, he poked at a plastic lump. Oh, one of them is leaking. Don't worry. My voice was almost a squeak. They always leak. That's why I carry them in this old truck. They're stained the bottom of it red. Relief crashed through me as he ceased his explorations and returned to my window. And you're driving around this late because you couldn't sleep. There was a knowing curl to his mouth. His gaze took in my tight top and disheveled hair. You think I'm going to believe that? The innuendo was blatant, and I almost lost my cool. He thought I'd been sleeping around. An unspoken accusation hung between us, nearly twenty-three years in the making. Just like your mother, aren't you? It wasn't easy being illegitimate in a small town. People still held that against you. In today's society, you wouldn't think it mattered, but Licking Falls, Ohio had its own set of standards. They were archaic at best. With great effort, I restrained my anger. My humanity tended to shed like a disposable skin when I got angry. Can we just keep this between us, Sheriff? Back to the guileless blinking of my eyes. It had worked on the dead guy, anyway. Promise I won't do it again? He fingered his belt as he considered me. His large belly strained against the fabric of his shirt, but I refrained from comments about his girth or the fact that he smelled like beer. Finally, he smiled, exposing a crooked front tooth. Go home, Catherine Crawfield, and get that tail light fixed. Yes, sir. Giddy with my reprieve, I revved up the truck and drove off. That had been close. I have to be more careful next time. People complained about having deadbeat fathers or skeletons in their family's closets. For me, both were really true. 
Oh, don't get me wrong. I hadn't always known what I was. My mother, the only other person in on the secret, didn't tell me until I was sixteen. I grew up with abilities other children didn't have. But when I asked her about them, she'd get angry and tell me not to talk about it. I learned to keep things to myself and hide my differences. To everyone else, I was just weird. Friendless. Liked to wander around at strange hours and had odd, pale skin. Even my grandparents didn't know what was in me. But then again, neither did those I hunted. Thanks for listening. Next time, we're going to go ahead and visit with Barb and J.C. Handy, uh, the first book in the Noble Dead series called Dampier. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.